Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries in regards to one of the most mysterious and most intriguing FRB or fast radio burst out there. The FRB with the long name you can see right here. And more specifically, we're going to be discussing one of the more recent papers about this FRB along with some of the recent discoveries helping us figure out what exactly it is, what causes this unusual phenomenon, but more importantly figuring out what it probably isn't. As a matter of fact, we still have no idea what FRBs are or what creates them. At the moment they're just as mysterious as they were back in 2007 when the first one was found. And with some of the recent discoveries, they actually became even more unusual and more mysterious. A lot more difficult to explain. But first, let's talk a little bit more about this particular FRB and what makes it special. First of all, as the name here suggests, it was discovered approximately three years ago back in 2018. And just like a lot of other modern discoveries in regards to this phenomenon, it was found by this Canadian telescope known as CHIME. Or maybe CHIME, I still have no idea how to pronounce it. Anyway, it was actually built specifically to look for various fast radio bursts. In order for us to figure out what exactly is causing them and in order to solve this mystery once and for all. CHIME in this case means Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment. And this particular observatory has been extremely productive in discovering a lot of new things about FRBs, including solving some of the mysteries. This is exactly how we learned that one of the more recent FRBs actually came from within our galaxy, from the Milky Way galaxy, and was caused by a tremendous eruption on a neutron star, or more specifically, on a magnetar. So today, a lot of FRBs are believed to be produced by various magnetars but not all of them, or at least not all of them can be explained this way. And as a matter of fact, a lot of additional observations and some of the investigations using Hubble by trying to discover where they're coming from has already established that many FRBs seem to be actually originating from various parts of different galaxies, not necessarily from regions where we do find a lot of neutron stars or a lot of magnetars. Some of them have been found to come from regions where no magnetars are suspected to exist at all. So something else may cause these unusual phenomena. Although, okay, quick side note, in case this is the first time you hear about FRBs, what exactly are they? So imagine detecting an extremely short signal, or specifically an extremely short spike in radio waves coming from extremely distant galaxies yet powerful enough to be visible from planet Earth, suggesting that something extremely powerful produced these unusual bursts. They only last about one one thousandth of a second, and the total energy that they managed to produce during that time is equivalent to like millions and millions or even billions of stars similar to our Sun, with all this energy released in that microsecond. So this is a tremendously powerful event. But because of its shortness, it was only discovered only approximately a decade ago. Yet today we believe that up to several hundreds of these bursts should be detectable from planet Earth if we were to somehow capture the entire night skies. So they do seem to be pretty common and are caused by something that seems to be all over the place. And at least one of them was caused by a magnetar in the Milky Way galaxy. But we don't think that they're all caused by the same phenomena or at least not in the same way mostly because of the way or the nature of these FRBs. It looks like some of them only happened once and have not been detected since, but some of them are randomly repeated here and there. The repeated FRBs seem to be a lot less common, but they definitely exist and have already been identified by several different observatories. But to add to the mystery, something else was discovered in 2018. A completely new type of an FRB that the scientists are currently referring to as the periodic repeater. It's an FRB that seems to have a period and it repeats after a very regular time. In this particular case, it repeats after 16.3 days. 16.35 to be more exact. But it doesn't just release energy every 16.35 days. It works a little bit differently here. For about 12 days, it stays completely silent. But then afterwards, for approximately 4.3 days, it starts to burst here and there. Here are actually some of the bursts detected in one of the recent studies. And it produces slightly different bursts as well, in different frequencies. Or at least slightly different frequencies. And so in the recent study, the scientists wanted to find out exactly what frequencies it produces, and they sort of categorized it into, well, what you would call radio colors. So just like we have color spectrum for optical light, with colors ranging from red to blue, you could technically do the same for any other frequency, including ultraviolet, including X-ray light, 
and including radio waves. And so here, anything that has much longer wavelength is going to be radio red, whereas something that's going to have shorter wavelength is going to be radio blue. And the scientists wanted to find out how much of radio blue and radio red light is going to be coming from these emissions, because this can definitively help the scientists figure out what happens in the vicinity of this object and thus maybe explain what's going on there. For example, one of the most prevalent explanations for what's happening here is that this is some sort of a neutron star binary. With a neutron star, or specifically a magnetar in this case, creating what we usually call X-ray binary. Essentially, the neutron star is slowly eating up the larger star that it orbits around, and at the same time, all of this causes a huge amount of wind, a huge amount of clouds coming from this region, and also a huge amount of energy as some of this energy falls into the neutron star itself. But because the orbit is maybe about 16.3 days, we only get to observe these emissions every 16.3 days. The explanation, of course, makes a lot of sense. But in this case, because of the interaction between the larger object, the star, and the neutron star, we expect this region to be filled with a lot of different types of wind, with some of these wind particles essentially blocking some parts of light, some part of radio light. For example, if we go back to that analogy of radio red and radio blue light, radio red light should not be detectable. In certain frequencies, the light should be blocked by various particles created by these massive amounts of wind. And so in theory, if we look at this radio burst and we find that a lot of blue radio light is coming toward us, but we detect nothing in certain frequencies, specifically red radio light, this should definitely suggest to us that this is probably some sort of an X-ray binary, a magnetar orbiting a large star, and a lot of wind here is blocking a lot of these different frequencies. And so that's kind of what the scientists did in this recent study. But there have been a lot of other recent investigations about this unusual FRB, and so here's what we've discovered. First of all, one of the recent papers was able to quite definitively establish where all of this is coming from and even discover the size of the potential object. They did this by analyzing the actual emissions from the FRB, and specifically the changes in the emissions as they travel across the universe. All of this seems to be coming from an object that's approximately 450 million light years away from us. And from a somewhat similar to our home galaxy, with the FRB coming from the region of the galaxy right there, from one of the arms. This galaxy also has one of those long, difficult to pronounce names. At the same time, unlike the FRB from the Milky Way galaxy, that managed to produce quite a lot of X-ray radiation that was detected from planet Earth, this FRB does not seem to produce anything except for radio light. It's not visible in optical light, it's not visible in, in the X-rays, gamma rays and so on, only radio light. Which also means that it might be created by something entirely different. But more surprisingly, when the scientists looked at this FRB using two different telescopes, two radio telescopes, one able to perceive short wavelengths and one able to perceive long wavelengths, they were really shocked to find out that it was detectable in both of the wavelengths. Or in other words, both blue radio light and red radio light was visible coming from this region. Nothing was blocking anything. It's as if this region was completely free of any stellar wind or any other emissions that would normally block certain frequencies of radio waves. Which sort of throws away that one theory about the binary system. It does not seem to be any kind of an X-ray binary with something orbiting something else every 16.3 days. This strange repeated FRB seems to have a completely different, currently unknown explanation. And more specifically, as you can kind of see from this image, the scientists here were able to see two days of this blue radio light, followed by three days of red radio light, which is sort of even more difficult to explain. It means that the frequency changed over time, and it will probably repeat again in 16.3 days. But in more scientific terms, the blue light here represents the wavelength of about 21 centimeters or about 1.4 gigahertz, that's essentially the hydrogen line. Whereas the red line represents approximately 3 meter long wavelengths, that's just over 100 megahertz. And so they were able to detect the lowest ever frequency coming from an FRB. The frequency that was not really expected to be found at all. But there still has to be some sort of an explanation here, or at least the best candidate for an explanation. And there is one. At the moment, it still involves magnetars, and in this case, a magnetar that either wobbles every 16.3 days or just spins extremely slowly. So it could be just a really unusual slow-spinning magnetar. 
which by the way was originally proposed back in the days as well as one of the potential explanations, but not the most likely one. And so if it is a magnetar that's slowly spinning, there are going to be a lot of new questions about why it's spinning so slow and what exactly is causing it to have these unusual emissions for approximately 4 days with 12 days of silence. Although a more likely explanation is the one we just don't have yet. It's quite possible that whatever is happening here has just not been explained or even thought about yet. It could be something that's just a little bit too complex for us to currently understand. So maybe even some sort of an exotic, unusual object that we've never seen before. But intriguingly enough, one of the most famous repeated FRBs, the FRB known as 121102, not so long ago has also been confirmed to be very likely a periodic repeater. It seems to have its own pattern. It seems to create radio bursts for approximately 90 days with very random bursts and then stay quiet for about 67 days, with a total cycle being about 157 days or roughly around 10 times as long as the one discussed in this paper. So if we have two of these unusual phenomena, we're probably going to get much closer to trying to figure out what's happening here. And it's probably only a matter of time before someone finally is able to explain what's going on here. But interestingly, when the scientists analyzed the total size of this object, when they actually were able to use the frequencies emitted to try to figure out what sort of an object could potentially create these effects, they discovered that the total size possible is only about one kilometer, which is hypothetically even smaller than the smallest neutron star we've ever found. So for all we know, it could potentially be some sort of an exotic object nobody has ever thought about before. Or maybe someone thought about but never connected it to a potential fast radio burst. And with so many different astronomical mysteries to solve, it's definitely a pretty exciting time to study these sciences. And so I'm sure in the next few years we'll have so much more to talk about as the scientists discover more and more about these unusual phenomena. At the moment, it's still just as much of a mystery as about 10 years ago. Possibly even a little bit more of a mystery because of these unusual observations and because of these unpredictable detections. And so what exactly it is and what's producing these emissions at the moment is a big mystery. It's something that's about one kilometer in size, something that's able to produce a ridiculous amount of power and produces it every 16.3 days for about four days in these short bursts. And it's something that seems to have natural explanations because the emissions here are more or less random in terms of energy and appearance. So it's definitely not some sort of an extraterrestrial intelligence. And so if not aliens and not X-ray binaries, it could be something exotic and something that we haven't really thought about just yet. So once we find out, I'll make sure to follow this up in another video. Until then, thank you for watching, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.